Hi, I'm James Freed, and today as part of our bioethics series for Science TV, I'm here to talk to you about incidental findings. Incidental findings are a problem that have plagued doctors and researchers alike for many years as there are complex ethical dilemmas surrounding the issue. An incidental finding is the discovery of a potential health threat to a patient that is unrelated to the primary issue being tested for. Whether it's the discovery of a chromosomal mutation during genetic screening or a malignant tumour during a CT scan. Incidental findings remains one of the most controversial ethical issues within the world of science and medicine and thanks to the advancements within genomics, the probability of discovering an incidental finding has drastically increased. Incidental findings during research arise during the collection and analysis of research images and data. This can raise difficult questions. Do researchers have an obligation to examine their data for incidental findings? What should they do once they recognise one? How much information should the patient receive? And how much should they be told if their mental capacity is limited? For example, let's take Raj, a healthy 55-year-old male who participated in a research study investigating the genetics of multiple sclerosis in hopes of helping his son. Raj's entire genome was sequenced and compared with his son's genome. The researcher revealed they had some genetic information that affected him specifically and was not related to his son's MS. They had discovered a mutation in his genome whereby he will almost certainly develop early onset Alzheimer's disease. There is little medical action Raj can take and he is absolutely devastated by the news. Were the researchers right to tell him? In 2002, the Consortium of Pharmacogenomics argued that researchers are obligated to offer the research participant disclosure of research information when it is of potential benefit. However, in 2009, 348 incidental findings were randomly selected from UK hospitals. It was found that only 34 of the findings were disclosed to the patient. That's less than 10%. It was found that patients with only one incidental finding were less likely to receive disclosure than a patient with two or more. I'm here at the University of Leicester today to interview Professor Annette Cashmore, Director of the Genie Centre for Excellence in Teaching and Learning based in the Colleges of Medicine and Biological Sciences, who has kindly allowed me to interview her on the importance of incidental findings in genetics. I think um, one uh, reason for hiding any information is that the information is not only going to be relevant to that patient, it's going to be relevant to other family members. And in that situation, I think there does need to be discussion between um, other people who know and who are treating the patient. My personal feelings are that wherever possible, any findings should be made um, available to the uh, patient. Um, and I think that in discussions prior to any genetic screening, um, the situation about incidental findings should be brought up and discussed with the patient at that time. It is safe to say that the ethics surrounding incidental findings will never be solved. There are currently no laws or regulations on how to deal with an incidental finding. Every case is unique, depending on the disease, the evidence, the researcher and the patient, and none of them can be treated in exactly the same way. I've been James Freed, presenter for SciTV. Thank you for listening to our documentary.